stations. Attention, all districts. A five-alarm fire, five bells. Move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a moment, we'll transfer you to the private office of Chief Cody at Fire Department Headquarters. Chief Cody has just picked up the phone to make an important call to the home of Tim Collins, rookie fireman. But before we listen in on that phone call, here's a message especially for you. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to Chief Cody's office at Fire Department Headquarters where you remember Trudy, 12-year-old sister of Tim Collins, rookie fireman, has just dropped in to ask the chief an important question. Just a moment ago, Trudy revealed to Chief Cody her reason for visiting him in his office. So I'm not here to see you as an old friend, Chief Cody. I was sent here as a, as a delegation. A delegation, Trudy? Was sent by whom? By all the boys and girls at Northside School. We're going to have a fire prevention assembly at school tomorrow, and we want you to be our speaker. Well, now, Trudy, that's a real honor. What time is that assembly of yours tomorrow, Trudy? Eleven o'clock. Oh, doggone. Just when I'll be meeting with the fire prevention committee of the Commerce Club. Oh, dear. Well, now what'll I do? Huh. I've got it. Sit tight, Trudy. I'll get you a speaker. The switchboard? Uh, get me the home of Timothy Collins. That's right, Tim Collins of Hook and Ladder Company Three Ones. Oh. You're going to send Tim. Never say Chief Cody let an old friend down, Trudy. Oh, next to you, Chief Cody. Tim will be best of all. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, this is Bob Cody, Mrs. Collins. Yes, I want to speak to your son, Tim, on some very important fire department business. Uh, yes, I'll hold the line, Mrs. Collins. Hello. Oh, this is Private Collins. Oh, yes, sir, Chief Cody. What can I... Oh, special duty? Oh, of course, Chief, if you'll notify my company commander, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody's going to give me my orders? Oh. Uh, hello. Private Collins speaking, yes. Go ahead. Uh, a little louder, please. What? I'm to report tomorrow at 11 o'clock at Northside School to give a speech to... The Oh, good grief. Oh, oh, one, one minute, please. I, look, I, I didn't, I didn't catch your name, miss, but, uh, I think maybe I've heard that voice before. Uh-huh, I thought so. Trudy Collins, when you come home, I'll... Oh, she hung up. Mom, what kind of a way is that to bring up your kids? That youngest child of yours is in Chief Cody's office, and she talked him into sending me to the school assembly tomorrow. Oh, good grief. How will I ever know what to say? Mom, you've got to help me. Uh, Miss Braddock. Yes, Tim? Miss Braddock, they aren't uh, bringing in the kids from the junior high, too, are they, from the other building? Why, of course. Both junior and senior high school attend these special assemblies. Oh. You'll have an audience of, uh, oh, I'd say at least 2,000 boys and girls. Oh, good grief. I beg your pardon. Well, it's, it's, it's bad enough just sitting here on the platform, Miss Braddock, but to, to get up and talk to a crowd like that? Now, Timothy, it's your duty. Stop tugging at your collar. Uh, oh, yes, Miss Braddock. My goodness, when you were here at Northside four years ago, you never minded a little thing like an audience. Oh, there's your brother, James. Huh? Oh, Oh, yeah, and, and Trudy, the little monkey. They... Oh, good grief, they're closing the doors. It's going to begin. It'll be over before you know it, Timothy. But just remember, not to twitch at your collar. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Boys and girls. Boys and girls. We have the honor and privilege today 
of hearing a few remarks from a very special guest, a former student of our school, who has made a name for himself as a member of our city's fire department. I have the pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Timothy Collins. Uh, uh, thank you, Miss Braddock. Boys and girls, members of the faculty of Northside School. Uh, <clears throat> boys and girls, I, I wonder if you know what fire is. I know. Hey, I know. Oh, oh who's that? Are you out there? You want to tell us? I'm Wendy Williams, and a fire, that's oxidation. When something combines with oxygen, that makes heat. And if it combines fast enough and makes enough heat, that's a fire. Oh, that's right. That's right. That, that's just what it is, Whitey. Now, listen carefully, boys and girls. From what he just said, here's what you need to cause a fire. I know. I know, Tim. Let me. Jimmy? Oh, all right, Jimmy. You tell us. Well, you need something that will burn. Enough oxygen around to combine with it and enough heat to start it burning. Ah, <laughs> that's right. Well, now we know the, uh, the chemistry of fire. And as for fighting a fire, there are three things we can do. We can... Remove that combustible substance. We can shut off the oxygen with foam or, or water spray to stop the burning. Or we can reduce the heat below the burning point. Now, who can tell me what... Oh, yes, me. Me. <laughs> uh, not, no, not, not everybody at once. Take it easy. <laughs> All right, that's better. Now, uh, let's see who can answer this one. And think before you raise your hand. In the case of a fire in a... Oh. Fire drill. Now, why would the principal call fire drill now, right in the midst of assembly? Oh, good idea, Miss Craddock. They ought to be ready for fire drill any moment without warning. Mm, well, you just watch how well they behave, Tommy. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching. Dead silence from the first alarm. Mm -hmm. Hardly passing. No shoving or skylarking. Mm, and you'll see how they move right out into the street without a... Uh, uh, oh, uh, dear. <laughs> somebody dotted out a line. Yes, and I'm very much afraid it was your sister, Trudy. Huh? Oh, she knows better than that. Where did she go? Into that corridor that leads to the... Why? Why, here she is. Oh, uh, Trudy, what's the idea? Why'd you run back here? Don't you know how to act in a fire drill? Well, I came back to, to make a rescue. Huh? You and Miss Braddock, you need to be rescued. Else, why didn't Miss Braddock go to her post the minute fire drill began? Oh, Trudy, you're right. Standing here watching everybody else like a silly old thing when I should supervise passing at the main door. Um, rescue your brother, Trudy. Lead him out the back way. <laughs> you win, Trudy. I'm in your hands. Which way do we go? Well, Tim, wait. It, it isn't a fire drill. What do you mean? Back where I was sitting, back there by the ventilator, I smelled something hot. And then it got worse and... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Who's that coming back into the hall? Oh, that's Whitey. Whitey! Right beside you, that ventilator thing. Well, there's smoke starting to come out, Mr. Collins. Something combustible must be combusting. Come and see. Oh, come on, Tim. It is. It's a real fire. Oh, hold it, Trudy. Where's that back way out Miss Braddock said to take? Oh, Tim, you're not going to make me go out. This is an order, Trudy. You're to get out that back way as fast as you can. Report to the principal that there's a fire in the ventilating system and rejoin your group. Oh, fiddlesticks. I never have any fun. Come on, let me see you go fast. Okay. All right, Whitey. Let's see where that smoke is coming from. Hey, you watch out there. Cut out that talking in line. James. Jimmy Collins. Yes, Miss Braddock? Admit Whitey Williams to his group, please. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Whitey, where you been? Inside. Gee, it's the ventilator. All of a sudden, big clouds of smoke out of the ventilator. And your brother was right there, too. Hey, that's from the air conditioning thing. Way up on the top of the school. Golly gosh, I bet there's a fire in the motor. What's your brother gonna do? He told me to go tell Miss Braddock he was going up and looking. Gee, he went up the stairs like on skis, only going up instead of down. You know what I mean. Hey, look at the fire engine. Oh, fire engine. That's a hook and ladder truck. That's no engine. Engines are pumps and hose carts and stuff. This way, Chief Cody. Where's the fire, ma'am? It's somewhere in the ventilating system, Chief. Electrical fire. Bring that carbon dioxide. Okay, 
Chief Cody, maybe you should know that... Uh, what's that, ma'am? Well, all the boys and girls and teachers and janitors are accounted for. Everyone, that is, except the principal. The principal? Yes. Where was he seen last? Running up the main stairway inside. Come on, boys. There's a man missing and we've got to find him. Now, in a big modern school building, just as anywhere else, the wisest course for any civilian to take is to call the fire department and then leave it to the professional firefighters to confine the blaze and put it out. But the principal of Northside School, in his eagerness to protect his building, has taken a chance. And it's lucky for him that Tim Collins and Chief Cody are on the way, as you'll hear in our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a minute, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own hometown. But before you meet Chief Cody, here's something else you want to hear. And now Chief Bob Cody with a special assignment for all young firefighters. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is your friend, Chief Cody, and here is your special assignment. Attention, firefighters. You are to grade your own class at school on its performance at fire drill. As soon as the signal is given... Do the boys and girls form a good line? Do they keep a strict silence? Do they pass quickly and quietly? Do they listen for orders and obey them promptly? Remember, good performance at fire drill may save your life someday. That is all. So long for now. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! Go, Firefighters! Firefighters is written by Frank Jones and has a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.